Bradford is a brake van owned by the other railway who frequently finds himself on trains bound for Sodor. He is well liked by the Fat Controller's engines, for he has a remarkable knack for making trucks behave. Bradford stands no nonsense, and the trucks wisely give him none, making sure to stay on his wavelength. One day, Bradford was resting in a yard near Barrow. He just returned from a morning coal run and was dozing peacefully in the sun. Presently, he heard a horn and looked up to see Boko pulling in, looking exhausted. The little brake van watched as he exchanged words with the yardmaster and then left his trucks to refuel. The diesel pulled up next to Bradford, who seized the opportunity for a chat. You look tired, Boko. Fuses aren't acting up again, are they? No, it's just these stupid trucks. The Fat Controller recently updated the railway's rolling stock, and they're fine for the most part, no worse than any other trucks. But the batch sent to Edwards Branch, well, there's something else. I had the pleasure of bringing them up from Wellsworth, and you'd best believe me they made it difficult. <laughs> I sort of wish I had you on my train. You'd whip them into shape, I'm sure. Well, as it happens, I'm not scheduled on any trains for the rest of the day. I could be your rear on the way back if the Yardmaster allows. Oh, that'd be great, actually. Though I feel obligated to again warn you of just what you're getting into here. Oh, <laughs> don't you worry. I've yet to meet a lot who can get the better of me. You haven't met these ones yet. Bradford spoke with the yard manager, who agreed to let him go. A shunter then moved him to the back of the train to be coupled up. Bradford jumped on the opportunity to make an impression. Right, listen up you lot! I have received word the group of you have an itch for causing problems! I would strongly advise against it with me back here! Tricks! Us? We would never! It hurts you'd even imply such a thing! Hmm, sure. <laughs> the train moved out of the yard without issue, but it wouldn't stay like that for long. Hold back! Hold back! Oh no, you don't! Ooh, ooh, who does this van think he is? You don't want to find out! Now be wise and stay in line! trucks were not amused. We'll show him. He might have control over mainland trucks, but you can't order us about. The journey went without issue for a while, though Bradford wasn't stupid. He kept his guard up at all times. Soon, they reached the hill. You know what to do. <laughs> Without warning, the truck's brakes suddenly slammed hard on again. Hey, stop that, now! And Bradford surged forward, bumping the train on. Unfortunately, this was exactly what the trucks had hoped for. Now! And without warning, the trucks used a sudden boost in momentum to push themselves over the top of the hill, beginning the descent down the other side before the train had a chance to pin the brakes. Bradford, genuinely caught off guard by this, slammed on his brakes, trying hard to recover, but the train was heavy. <laughs> All this talk back there about keeping us in line? Well, let's see it! Bradford, what's going on back there? Uh, these stupid trucks! Uh... The weight of the train caused it to quickly pick up speed as they headed down the hill, with the trucks loving every second of it. On! 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 Uh, uh, come on! Uh. As Edward Station came into view, Bradford felt the train finally beginning to slow again. The little van made one final gallant effort and regained control bringing the train to a stop with the front of the train just beyond the platform. Edward and the passengers stared in shock. Boko? Bradford? Are you two alright? <sighs> yes. Um, I'm fine. Bradford? <sighs> uh, yeah, 
Yeah, I'm all right. You stupid trucks are some real pieces of work, you know. <laughs> Thought you could keep us in line, did ya? Hope you got a taste. <laughs> Bradford didn't bother wasting any more time arguing with the trucks. He knew it wasn't worth the effort. Instead, he began cooking up an alternate way to make the trucks see sense. For the rest of the day, Bradford was passed around various trains on Edward's branch. He didn't see the new trucks again, giving him time to think of a plan. After completing a run to the docks that evening, he spoke to Edward about it. Well, I don't see any harm in giving it a try. I'm not sure how much detail Boko went into, but these trucks really are some of the worst I've ever met. It seems nothing I do or say has any impact on them. Given your, um, sudden appearance at my station earlier today, I take it you're well aware of that, though. I'll try anything to straighten them out at this point. Right then, they're in the yard outside the harbour, you say? Yes, I can bring you over there now if you'd like. Yes, please, if you don't mind. Edward brought Bradford over to where the new truck sat in the yard. They scowled at him as they saw him approaching. Ooh, look lads, it's that stuck-up loudmouth van again. Back for round two, are ya? We'll show you what for. No need, I'm just here for a rest. I don't work on this railway normally, so I've no reason to waste time arguing with you lot further. <laughs> you know, you trucks actually remind me of a group I met years ago. Guarantee you they weren't as troublesome as us. No, they were a bit more troublesome than you all, by quite a bit actually. Worse than us? Pshaw, not a chance. Oh no, they were worse. An absolute nightmare to deal with. Good thing I won't have to worry about them again. The trucks were intrigued. Huh? What do you mean by that? Well, I suppose I could explain if you're really interested. Though I will warn you, it may disturb you somewhat. Now the trucks were really curious. Bradford had successfully lured them in. Tell us! It'll take more than a stupid story to spook us. Go on! <sighs> Very well then. Here it is. Throughout my many years of service, I've been moved to many different places and have seen much of what Britain's railways have to offer. This story takes place during a period in which I was assigned to a small branch. It was your typical goods line, really nothing about it stood out. Well, except for one small detail of note. At the far side of the line's yard sat a lone brake van. It was unassuming enough, looked like any other van at a glance. Strangely, however, we were told to never move it unless explicitly instructed to do so by the manager. No reason for this was ever given, though the van seemed harmless enough, so nobody really questioned it. Still, I can recall several nights where me and the other vans would discuss it, wondering why that seemingly ordinary one had to be kept separate from the rest of us. We never saw him speak to anyone, and as such none of us thought it was worth trying to ask him. Odd as the situation was, it didn't really affect much, and operations on the branch ran smoothly as could be during my tenure. At least, they did. Until one day when the manager decided to purchase a new fleet of trucks. They were brand new and eager to make an impression, though not a good one. From my very first time serving as a van for them, I knew they were going to be problematic. These trucks were devils, the worst I've seen and it isn't particularly close. They would start their games the second their train began to move. They'd push, pull, bump, berate, anything they could think of to make the journey more difficult. You'd best believe they tried it. They were all horrid, though there was one who stood out amongst the rest as the worst of the bunch. A little terror the engines nicknamed Gremlin. Gremlin was the self-appointed leader of the lot, and was always the one to direct the others how to play their tricks. His tactics were very effective which made the rest of the group fiercely loyal. They followed Gremlin's lead without question, much to the disgruntlement of all the engines and workers who had to deal with them. Despite their persistence, the trucks weren't actually able to cause any major accidents for a while. Oh sure, there was no shortage of minor scrapes, smashed buffers, small derailments on points, coupling brakes, things of that nature, but as there were no hills on the branch, no one thought the trucks could cause a serious runaway or crash. 
That was until one day, where the trucks managed to push their engine through a set of buffers and into a workman's hut. Luckily, no workman had been inside, but the manager was furious. Having finally had enough of Gremlin and his cronies' mischief, he decided to give them an ultimatum that evening. My patience with you has worn thin, the manager told them. I've wasted enough time arguing with you lot. This is your final chance. Are you trucks going to get your act together or not? No, <laughs> they sneered. We'll never listen to you. And the trucks cackled with Gremlin's laugh being the loudest of all. The manager simply nodded, then turned and walked away. The trucks, feeling very pleased with themselves, continued to laugh and jeer as they were shunted into place for their evening train. They were so distracted by their own idiocy that they failed to notice the shunter retrieving a certain van from the far side of the yard. They were none the wiser the van being coupled to the back of them was not one they'd ever gone out with before. And even if they had, it wouldn't have mattered. After causing that accident earlier, the trucks felt untouchable. They giggled to each other as their engine backed down onto them. Right, lads, let's give them what for! <laughs> The trucks quickly got up to their old tricks, bumping into each other repeatedly and locking their brakes on hard. To their delight, they found the van at the back of the train was doing nothing to stop them. The trucks howled with laughter as the train bumped down the line. The sun fell quickly and the daylight soon burned out. It was fully dark by the time the train neared the line's sole tunnel. It wasn't a particularly long tunnel, and the trucks thought nothing of it. After all, they travelled through it countless times, it wasn't anything special to them. The trucks continued to play their games as they entered its mouth, the light from the moon disappearing from their sight one by one until they'd all entered the pitch blackness of the tunnel. As this happened, there was an unexpected screech from the rear of the train, as the van slammed its brakes on with a tremendous force. The sudden jolt caused the coupling of the leading truck to snap, leaving the trucks behind in the tunnel as its engine continued forward. No one knows for sure what happened next. According to the engine and its crew, the momentum of the coupling brake carried them for a distance, and they had to reverse back down the line to the tunnel. As they did, they suddenly heard loud, blood-curdling screams coming from within the tunnel. They would later describe the wailing as sounding as if the souls of the damned were being dragged down into the depths of hell. They raced back to the tunnel to see what was going on, and swore they saw a red light emanating from within, a glow which faded along with the screams as the engine and the crew got closer. By the time they entered the tunnel, everything had stopped. They found the trucks right where they'd left them each one with a twisted expression of horror on their face. They tried asking them about what had happened, but none would answer. They wouldn't even make a peep. They just stared blankly into the distance. The crew ventured back along the train and found that, to their surprise, the brake van seemed rather unfazed. He just sat there, looking uninterested. They asked him what had happened, which he gave no answer to. Apparently, he didn't even react to the question. The driver climbed aboard to ask the guard, only to find none present. Though, thinking about it, neither the crew nor the engine could ever recall seeing a guard board the train. Confused, but still having a job to do, the crew climbed back into their engine and continued their journey. The 
trucks gave them no more issues the rest of the way. When they arrived, they were presented with one final oddity. As a count of the trucks showed the train was one short, the men ran along it several times to make sure, and indeed, Gremlin was nowhere to be seen. The engine and crew swore they recalled seeing him on the train when they left, though none could say where he was now. They never did find Gremlin. No one knows what happened to him. Well, not no one, but any hope of learning anything from the trucks was short-lived, for whatever they'd seen had changed them. I never saw them cause any more problems the rest of the time I worked on that branch. Come to think of it, I can't even recall any of them saying a single word. As for the van, he was back on his siding the following morning. I remember feeling different after hearing what happened that night. I was always a little uncomfortable around him from then on. I never liked when we were alone in the yard. I was relieved when I was transferred. I wanted to put as much distance between me and that brake van as possible. I haven't seen him since and I don't know what ultimately became of him. I like to think he's hidden away somewhere far removed from the public eye where no one can find him again. However, that's just wishful thinking. The reality is, that van could have ended up anywhere. And the worst part is, it looks like any other brake van, so you'd never know if it was near you. Not even if it was on the back of your very own train. The trucks were left stunned as Bradford finished his story. None of them knew what to say. Ah oh, well, sometimes trucks are just too troublesome for their own good. Maybe that van was only doing what needed to be done. Wouldn't you lot agree? I, I, I agree, mm -hmm. I yes, definitely yeah. agree. <laughs> just then, the yardmaster walked over. Bradford, you've been rusted to go out and out this evening train. The train's headed to Barrow, so he'll drop you off there. Edward, can you take Bradford over to the docks to be coupled on? Sure thing. Come on, Bradford. Righto. Nice chatting with you, trucks. Bradford called out as Edward pulled him away. But the trucks didn't share his sentiment. Bradford's story had deeply affected them, even if they didn't want to admit it. As their eyes darted about, frantically scanning the various vans in the yard, they knew they wouldn't be trying any more tricks for the foreseeable future.